Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. We are now live for the Senior A. This is the second tier boys grand final. And it is between James Cook High School and De La Salle College. We'll bring up the team list and uh, how they will take the field in today's match. But already there's chants going on around the grounds. The boys are loving it. And they are pretty well as named. Let's check out both of those teams and how they will take the field. Huge thank you to SAS Sport, principal sponsors of all of these competitions here in the College Rugby League. Hayden and Rollard, our associate sponsors, and of course Steeden, official ball supplier to the Auckland Rugby League. So we'll have a pre-match haka, which is going to be performed now. See if we can get a close up on that Prima Chaka currently going on. Go, get the haka free, cheat free, go free. Superb. Great stuff here and a fantastic scene set up as we prepare for the Senior A. This is the second tier. SAS College Rugby League Senior A Grand Final. The La Salle College on screen. I forgot what number 
Joseph's Kevin Lewis. Just a reminder for us, Peter, that it just arrived for us two grand finals today. We do have quite a few people standing on the bank for bathroom, so we need to keep the Parker public access areas clear at all times. There are any spare seats on the grandstand, guys, who are encouraged to go and sit down. Thank you. His Fords are stacked that side. So into it we go. The senior A grand final. It will be James Cook High School with the first use of the football. Forward now by the eight, Henry Pelitati. Strong carry there from Fitalainga. Takes them inside the opposition half. Launching one long, which is over the head of Filippo at the back. It's on the goosey and <laughs> Brings the football back. Two very proud schools here. De La Salle haven't had a lot to do with rugby league in recent times, but it's great to have them back in the competition. And Troy, we need only look at some of the talent they've brought through over the years. In more recent times, the likes of Motu Tony, Henry Fafili, and Leslie Vinacolo, and one from your era that you might like, Francis Liotta as well, and a De La Salle old boy. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you wrote a story about this earlier, about you know the boys giving back and being down there, mate. You know, it was a fantastic read, and I don't know how many stories you managed to pump out in the hours God gives you, but you know, mate, it was um, it was good to see and uh, good to see some of the legends giving back. So we see a massive, don't argue. Great friend there by the number ten. So we clear the rock, work it down the left, a little dink over the top, the La Salle. Breathing down the neck, did well to take that slip. Needs to get away from that sideline. Somehow stays in, I think. No, he doesn't. Flags up. Foot was out. So well spotted by my partner in crime, Troy Hardy. So good chance here for De La Salle to strike first. Two and a half gone here at Mount Smart Stadium. Three. Straight off the back of the scrum, De La Salle will open the scoring. Jerry Mataltia. Great stuff off the back of the scrum and the lanky 13 crashes over. De La Salle on the board, three minutes gone. So we see here on the SAS action replay, they'd shaped up to go right. All the, all of the intention was there, but set play off the back of the scrum. Little seagull going in there. And managed to have enough length, strength, drag a couple of defenders across, and uh, four points. Not bad off the back of the scrum for the opening minutes of being in a grand final. And I've got to tell you, he's pretty happy with that too.
kick is good. De La Salle, six. James Cook high, nil, four minutes gone. What a start from De La Salle. And James Cook, they'll look back on the replay of that one painfully, I would think, because they, uh, they just weren't ready for it. Troy quite aptly pointed to. Everything was set up to go to the right, and uh, James Cook believed that as well. In the end, it was a pretty easy try for Mataltia. As we get ready for the restart, big thank you to SAS Sporting Apparel. You're after rugby league kit, they're the only place to go. Along with Hayden and Rollett, associate sponsors for today's grand final down here as the kick goes deep. Nice offload. Now they move the ball out to this right hand side. Now wheels down the sideline, pops it back, but the flag is up. It's promising for just a moment there. Well, they've failed to... No, they haven't. They've found touch in the end. That was a strange old one. So James Cook with a chance to hit right back and even scores. Fitalainga. Moala, the dummy half. Shifts and... Links with Saipili. Down the short, they'll go via the big man. This is the prop forward, Henry Pilitati. Clear the ruck and come back to the middle. Forty. Baniani is taken down ten out from the line. This is the last for James Cook. Kick dribbled in behind, takes a bounce. Is this six again? No, it's still the last. A charging fullback on down the sideline, flicks it back in. But he was out of play. So it breaks down. Good goal line defense from De La Salle Troy. A nice little pace to this game early on. Yeah, and it's good to see that they mounted a little bit of pressure down here. Uh, it's the first time they've been down inside, uh, you know, the opposition's um, 10, let alone 20. And a uh, beautiful day for Rugby League here at Mount Smart number two. If you're in the area, the big one's to come. And um, that kicks off a little bit later on this evening. So, you know, come and join us. Um, I think it's $2 to get in. Big $2 gold coin donation there, Corey. Yeah, or Unless you've got your school uniform on, <laughs> then you get in free. Disappointed you didn't bring yours today, Troy. Must be hiding yeah. in the closet somewhere, isn't well, it? Well, you know, because I'm very independent and Man Upper Grammar's not here tonight. <laughs> I, I keep it framed. Home. 
I know, I know you played a lot of club football back in the day, Troy, but what was the school comp like when you were coming through? Did you play much school footy or was it not, not such a big thing? Well, so thankful you asked me. My first day at Cullow Park, 1979, I think it would be. And the Mount Albert boys had won the, won the competition the year before. We came through and played with uh, Mandra Arcois, Mickey Yanasa. We were looking pretty tidy going into that um, grand final against Otaho. Joe Rapati tore us to shreds out on the edge. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we went down that day, but uh, it was you know, a magical moment to be on Carlow Park and it was first time for playing sure. first 13 for Max. Absolutely. That's what school 40 is all about as the LaSalle now worked this ball forward after receiving a penalty. And it's down the short now via Kalani Peru Donaldson, who's taken into touch. Well, a fair bit of that going on as well. Number of defenders who have uh, managed to bundle the attacker over into touch already. So scrum will pack down. This will go the way of James Cook High. Got that feeling that maybe a little bit of nervous energy in both teams right now. James Cook off the back of the scrum. Timothy Tia Tia gets whacked. Line speed as Troy Hardy dishes out coaching advice. De La Salle swallowing them up right now. Look at that tough carry though there from Pilitati. Heels for a flop, it's not forthcoming. So instead they'll go down the right hand side. He's dribbled in behind by 40. Bounces up nicely, but it's a great kick chase from James Cook. Excellent stuff. And ball put down. Again, that nervous energy. A couple of uncharacteristic mistakes creeping in here. Troy, it can happen on occasion like this. Yeah, and I can't help, uh, unless we can find out with somebody um, down uh, field side. Might be a little bit of dew on the ground. Mm. There's both sides have been losing their feet, you know, um, going into uh, attacking the defensive line. A uh, couple of players have fallen short, you know, before they've actually had the impact. And we can see there just a quick fumble, so maybe that's starting to play a little bit on it. I know that um, once the sun's gone down, the temperatures, temperature has certainly dropped here at Mount Smart. Yeah, it's not the warmest place on the planet come night time. Wonderful stadium, though. A great venue for an event like this as well. This is a good carry from Sosaya Mali Mali. Engaging the defence now is Timothy Tia Tia. Boy, he's got some energy about him. Again appeals for a plot, flop. To echo Troy's point from earlier, again, players slipping as they go into the contact. That was messy. Play on is the call. Fitulainga. Forty. Four different knock-ons in there that time, so it's all pretty one out so far as well. Not much expansive footy, and again, Troy, you wonder if that is to do with the conditions down there. We're up pretty high here, so can't 
exactly tell what it's like down there on the ground, but a lot of slipping, a lot of drop ball. Yeah, and it's only just really happened in this game. Like, you know, the two earlier matches, the sun was out, and it, um, it wasn't as bad as what it is in this match because both sides are seeming to have trouble with the ball. Um, but we'll see how it plays out. And maybe, you know, just a little bit of patience and, uh, and getting the ball in the bread basket will count. Complete the six, same old cliches. Always a funny one as well, isn't it? You play the full season in normal daylight conditions and then come grand final time, it's under lights as we see De La Salle charge through the middle there, and that is Tui Plotuver up into opposition territory. Good set here from De La Salle. Fatih Lofa. Work it down the right now. Jumping out of dummy half is Mulatalo Malu. Go three, go three. Kick goes in behind. Chase on here for De La Salle. Almost a mix up at the back. Oh, brilliant. Nah, a little bit too much in there. It's going to be a penalty. Thought it was a great tackle initially from Herbert Loza, but uh, second effort is made there. So they'll kick for touch here via Shimaya Foti. James Cook now working it out off their own half. <laughs> Contact there on Alfred Fakonga. Who they were talking to here. No, morning sufficient. Patrick Fanotti. Excellent carry there from Timothy Tiatia, the vice captain. Baniani becomes the makeshift dummy half, then links with his edge back rower Fred. Chance on here for James Cook. 17 and a bit gone. It's De La Salle who leads six to nil, reaching out, oh, brilliant stuff. Pure desire and effort, and it results in a try to Maitua Saipeli. Lovely stuff there from the big number 13, Troy. 6-4, kick to come. And Saipeli knows where the camera is. He's certainly celebrating that one, and as we see on the hop here, out of the dummy half, just getting into the middles here, and he really wanted to have a go. Not the biggest on the field. He certainly had two big boys on him, but he managed to keep his feet and watch the arm grow an extra metre. Boom. Straight under the black dot. Four points. But let's have a look at the celebration afterwards. Where's the camera? Uh, it's right there. There's a man who knows his business. Spot where the camera is before you score the try. Worry about the try later. Fanotti to attempt the conversion. Kicks good. Six all. James Cook high. De La Salle. Classy hit back from James Cook after going down early. 
So we're all even as we head into the 20th minute. Remembering these games are 25 minute halves rather than the 20 minute halves that we had earlier in the day for the Niner side games. Great to see too James Cook staying in the uh, staying in the tussle, staying in the match. You know, um, were we two, three minutes into the kickoff and De La Salle had gone in and. Um, you know, in a grand final, some teams tend to go into themselves at that point. You know, they got off to a firing start, but we're now back to six all. So we start again. So Titia fields it, runs off to Fakaongo. He's then met a tackle containing Rodney Toiplotuvea. Titia, the dummy half. Jumping out, look at the footwork. Met well though by the emerging defense from De La Salle. Strong. Picked up an ankle injury, he's heavily strapped already. So that's not a good sign for James Cook as he hobbles off into the back play. Baniani shuffles play on to our try scorer. Great play. What's the call here? Well, he's going to be done. Yeah, and fair enough too. Pushed the player away and denied them a chance from marker. It's uh, Moala that's been pinged there. Great call by our man in the middle. <laughs> De La Salle. Keeping the ball in the scrum, a la Melbourne Storm. Lovely flip pass out the back. Cover comes across, though, for James Cook. Nice little game building here as we head to the 22nd minute. Now, this will be a strip, I think. Fresh legs on the park in the shape of Malachi Tony. They'll go low to the corner, but short. Right up against their line here. James Cook defending with everything they got. Swing out the back and they'll start again. Filippo. Out wide. Oh, breaks through the tackle. Kalani Peru Donaldson. A barnstorming carry from the centre. Goes over and gives De La Salle the lead once again. So we see on the uh, SAS action sporting replay here that Jim bashing in on that left hand top edge and then went for the big spread. And uh, nice hold and play, uh, held up past there, just drew that defender. And this guy here, just too big. Little hip charge, Archie Bumper there, and slides in for a try on the other side of the coast. And look how happy are those boys. Waiting for the kick to come. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, all of the action replays along with the matches that you see tonight and uh, the grand final that's coming up is on the ARL TV's YouTube channel. And you can get to that through aucklandleague.co.nz. Kick from the sideline is well away. Never really got close. So De La Salle 10, 
James Cook High 6, you're watching the SAS College Rugby League Senior A Grand Final. About a minute to go in the first half. Nice little game in the building here, Troy Hardy. Absolutely, and you have to wonder sometimes, you know, in a Grand Final situation, missing a kick like that, does that two points come back to haunt you? Well, 25 minutes from now, the story will be told. Good return as well. <laughs> Siren sounds for half time. This is the last play of the game. Ball comes loose. So that'll get us to half time. De La Salle 10. James Cook, high school six. Short break before we are back with second half action. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's half time for our 2021 senior grand final. Tell us our college leading this contest against James Cook High School, 10 points for six. Um, support the ambassador vests. Yep, sure. You've done a little bit of that yourself? Yeah, I have, yeah. Um, I think it's a, a really good idea. It um, keeps, uh, you know, people in line, I guess, on the sidelines and uh, keeps people off the fields, give the kids a go. And kids need, um, you know, come here and have a positive uh, thing happening, eh? not uh, anything other than that. So uh, that really helps. I do think it's a really great initiative. Um, I get to wear a really flash orange vest and um, just remind people that we're here to support and be kind and courteous and just make it a really nice and exciting and encouraging environment for the kids. So we wear the vest to check that the um, spectators behave themselves and not make any trouble. And do you think that the best had an, uh, an impact on the kids' sports? Yes, definitely. Uh, the parents are more aware that there is people that are watching them. Do you all have a turn wearing it, or is it um, one person that's designated each week? No, we, we all get a chance. Good enough. Good stuff. Do sports support bibs? Yes. Um, does that help you as a referee? Uh, yes. And it, it also helps if they uh, like support all sidelines that bind the ropes. So they don't get too close to the yard. And I can see um, somebody's putting a couple of vests on over here on the game you're just about to referee. Yes. Do you think it's had a, uh, a good impact on the game with the kids? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, it controls the parents on the sidelines if they're getting too loud. Uh, but most parents are really, really good on the sidelines. So, uh, and, it, and it makes it easier for the ref on the field to concentrate on this game. Here to support the Howard Corner Thunder Sevens. Uh, we're playing Otara here, their home, gr home ground. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. What do you know about the orange vest? So um, we were told by our coach that um, each each family has a turn wearing it every week. Um, we were told if just to control our side of the crowd, yeah, our so supporters, and just making it um, fun for the little kids. So when they're playing, they don't see any um, craziness from the parents. Especially with the crowd supporting, the um, seeing this, like, just personally from back when I was playing it as a young boy, is a lot different. So um, it's definitely helped. About encouraging and pretty much enforcing positive, a positive attitude throughout the whole um, game for our children and yeah I think it's a, it plays a very important role. How to stay in line and um, and uh, it's also for the parents as well you know I mean it's not the NRL or adult, it's for, for the communities that come together and enjoy uh, more support the better. 